So uh, my name's Rachel Colley and I'm currently a bank dietitian with Wiltshire Health and Care and Great Western Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. Um, and my most recent appointment is that of long COVID lead dietitian, which is a, a very new post. Um, and it's just for a, a day a week at the moment. And it's all very new and it's, uh, it's an honour actually to, to be doing it. Interestingly, um, if, you know, if people are lucky enough, uh, many people eat and drink uh, hopefully three meals a day. And it, in, in my career, I've worked a lot with uh, adults with learning disabilities and their carers. And I've worked uh, in, in the field of weight management a lot as well. And I think we can do so much to help because for many people, the, the eating process and meal, meal times can be really stressful, uh, especially in the field of, uh, of learning disabilities. And I think for many people, food is sort of a bit of the enemy as well. It's they, they don't know what to eat. They, there's a lot of media messages that people get very confused by. Um, and so food can actually be a friend and sort of a, a real source of nourishment and, and a good thing. And I think if anything we can do helps that, then that's a real positive. My first degree was in human biological sciences at Loughborough University. And I think looking back, there were elements there where I was thinking, oh, food, I'm enjoying food and health. And so there, there were little nuggets, um, but not enough <laughs> to become a dietitian. So the, I think the big thing really for me was that other things were ruled out. So I actually had quite a long gap between finishing my first degree in 1990 and then actually graduating as a dietitian in 2000. And I think it was possibly career-wise a case of ruling things out. Uh, obviously learning as you go along in, in terms of where I think I, I developed a lot of skills, uh, hopefully. Um, but career-wise, it was a case of ruling things out. But then a, a big key thing actually was my first landlady, uh, Paula, Paula Hunt, was a dietitian. And uh, I'm sure conversations with her and just hearing about what she was doing uh, led, led me, I think subconsciously, uh, led me to decide actually this might be a career because I haven't really heard of a dietetic career. Um, so I think, yeah, she, she uh, has a key part to play, although it obviously took quite a long time. I'd had a 10-year gap uh, from my, or eight-year gap from my first degree, and I just remember thinking, I feel as I'm on a cliff edge. I've got to jump. I've got to do this. Don't know whether it's going to work. This feels very risky. But then as soon as I... Uh, got to the almost the first day I think of lectures I thought oh at last I, this I really did this is me this is me I know and it, it, from then on it was it was it was in, it was really interesting actually really interesting really enjoyable um yes loved it and and as well at the time the postgraduate course at the time um you had to do a major placement and then a minor placement So my early career, I think, was probably quite standard for the time. Um, so my first job uh, was as a hospital-based uh, dietitian, basic grade at the time, we were called. Um, that was at Blackpool Victoria Hospital. And then I, I think I always knew that I wanted to be a community dietitian. And so was very fortunate that something came up fairly soon. Um, so after about eight months at Blackpool, I then started a job based in Carlisle and was part of the community dietetic team there. And so did a lot of uh, clinics, uh, GP based clinics, part of a, a diabetic annual reviews for patients. And then quite a few talks to different patient groups, uh, varying from antenatal classes to people with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, 
um, and training, yes, training uh, student nurses as well. Uh, so, yeah, very varied and, and really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, life happened um, and some quite significant things happened uh, to me and I lost my cousin to MS. She died very early from that. Um, and what also the background to this was I've been diagnosed with MS myself in 1995, although my symptoms were very minor. Unfortunately, with uh, I think my reaction to Ruth dying and to personal things not going so well, my marriage wasn't going so well at that stage. Basically, my MS just went out of control and I had a, a bad patch with it. And as a result, I had to stop working in Carlisle. I moved back to live with my mum and dad and really wasn't very well at all uh, for about nine months. But come out of that, and I was okay enough to work, but it had to be part-time. I, I fear, looking back, although you could blame the incidents uh, that happened, actually, I think yeah, it was the way I reacted to them. And I think with all, all the, the uh, things that are positive now about mental health and, and dealing with stress, I think I would have dealt with things differently. So I, I've been a weight management dietitian as well as a learning disabilities dietitian. And for me, I'm fascinated by behaviour change. And so it, it's a big thing. When, when I see someone in clinic, um, whether it's real or, or now virtual, I'm needing them to trust me as a dietitian. Um, and that's above all others, you know, in, in, in the field of nutrition. And there is a lot of information people can get uh, from almost anywhere and so that's that's a real big ask so in the short amount of time that they have an appointment with me I am trying to help them trust me uh, but also I'm trying to get them to I guess to a stage where they feel ready willing and able uh, motivated and empowered to change their dietary behaviour in a way that benefits their health, which is, which is a big ask. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, so as you can imagine, it takes a lot of uh, skill, um, a lot of awareness, I think, of, of myself and, and of them um, when we're using the, the behavioural approach and motivational interviewing skills. And this is such a, for me, it's such a fascinating and big area uh, because it's not just about telling people what to do at all. It's about trying to empower them and help them to find that self and inner motivation to make positive changes, which is a, a real, real joy. Well, like many people, um, I've been able to work from home and I think for me, the, the, why that's been so good is that uh, the, my, my MS symptoms in the here and now are ones with uh, balance is a bit off sometimes. Uh, my walking isn't the greatest at all. Um, and my energy levels, uh, it's, it's like having chronic fatigue at times. Um, and so rather than all my energy going, or a lot of it going into the fact of trying to actually get to work and then walk from the car park to, to the clinic or, or the meeting, uh, all my energy can be focused on actually just being a dietitian, which has, has, been, has been joyful. I've been part of the, the BDA's specialist interest group of dietitians in the field of learning disabilities. And so we've met via Teams uh, dietitians all over the country and it's been so good to be part of that um, and feel that the, the, the work I've sort of been doing you know here in Wiltshire has actually been well received by colleagues as something that can actually help a lot of dietitians um, you know in, in the field of learning disabilities we, we seem to be very I hate to say it, underfunded but we are and so we're all we're all trying our best and um, we're all working away. But actually, you know, pooling our ideas and resources is 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 a brilliant thing. And I think it's going to really help a lot of us uh, in the way forward.
Um, I, I was asked uh, by Wiltshire and the Swindon dietitians to just uh, do a series of training sessions about behaviour change skills to our, our newer dietitians. And uh, with me, uh, MS and the heat don't mix, but really don't. I mean, I, can, I can't walk, I can't think straight. It's, it's awful. So um, unfortunately, one of the hottest days of the year coincided with a session I was supposed to be doing. So normally, of course, that would, I would not have been able to do that, could not have driven, could not have any, any, you know, got to the training session. What they didn't know, so it was, it was only about an hour session, uh, what they, what my colleagues didn't realise was that, you know, fans were going uh, <laughs> in the background and I had my feet in a, a bucket of cold water. And actually, head and shoulders, all, all good, all good. So it, for me, it was a real joy. I didn't have to cancel that uh, training session. And for me, it's been a bit of a funny story to, to tell my friends.